This screencast is an introduction to our Unit 2 topic of macroeconomic indicators. In this screencast, we are going to talk about the three major economic indicators, the economic goals for these indicators. We will get into GDP and we will define GDP, and then we'll also look at the relationship of GDP and how you figure out when there is a true recession happening. And lastly, we will look at the circular flow diagram from the macroeconomic perspective. So the three major economic indicators are GDP, unemployment, and inflation. GDP stands for gross domestic product, and this is known as a leading economic indicator because what is happening with GDP at this time will tell us what we are leading into with the state of the economy. Unemployment is a lagging economic indicator because usually what you see with unemployment is that this is the result of what has been happening uh, from times before. And inflation is another leading economic indicator. Inflation is the general increase in the price level. When we talk about the economic goals, there are certain percentage changes that we're trying to achieve. With real GDP, the economic goal is for economic growth, and we're looking for slow and steady growth of about 2 to 3 percent for this increase in GDP. Price stability, that is inflation, and we're just looking for a 1 to 2 percent inflation rate. Uh, full employment is a goal of around 5 to 6 unemployment. Each one of these of GDP, inflation, and unemployment have their own screencast. And in the unemployment one, we'll talk about why even having a percentage of unemployment is considered a goal or acceptable. Uh, for GDP, we're looking here at the total value of all final goods and services produced in a given year by an economy. When we talk, final is really important when you're giving the definition, you have to use it. And in the GDP screencast, it will talk about why using the term, the word final is necessary. Um, one of the things to really recognize here is the relationship between GDP and national income. They mean the same thing, and national income gets used a lot on the AP exam. So when, once you get into the graphs where you're labeling real GDP on the horizontal axis, it means the same thing as economic growth and also national income. One of the places to look when we're looking at um, GDP is looking at the FRED graph. And so when we pull up the um, FRED Institute as a way to look at real GDP, it's probably one of our most reliable sources. And what we see here is that GDP is measured in quarters, so every three months. So there are four GDP um, quarters per year. And when we're looking here in 2017, 16, 15, you're seeing all positive real GDP. You know, economic growth is happening here. Uh, and it's happening most of the time except for in quarter one of 2014. Now, this negative GDP means that our economic growth actually went, went down. We were not able to produce more. Um, and so with that, a lot of times what you heard on the news is they would talk about that we were in a recession. And when somebody gives that type of statement, that is a normative statement because they're just giving their bias or their opinion. The true definition of a recession is two consecutive quarters of negative GDP. And what you see here is that in quarter one, um, there was negative GDP, but it didn't happen the quarter before it, and it didn't happen the quarter after it. And if we look along this graph, and you can move back and you can see this historical data throughout, what you see here is that in 2014, 13, 12, 11, well, there's a little blurb here, you know, of the negative GDP. You don't have it for two consecutive quarters. In fact, you don't have a true recession until you get into here the end of 2008 um, leading into 2009. This is where we have four consecutive quarters of negative GDP. So if anybody is talking about recessions and when they've happened, 
the last true recession that we've had of two consecutive quarters of negative GDP happened in 2000, the end of 2008 and the beginning of 2009. And that was dealing with that whole financial crisis and what we were looking um, and dealing with with that. Um, now I want to talk about the circular flow diagram. And with the circular flow diagram, we in macroeconomics, it gets discussed where we have our two markets, our product market, and these are the goods and services that are made in relationship with the factors market, the resources, land, labor, capital, and entrepreneur ability that go into making the products. And then the interaction with our two sectors, the household, and also the firms. Um, and with that, what you have is money that is flowing throughout from the product market and it's going into the factors market to pay for all of the resources. And there's this interdependency because if the product market isn't paying households for their resources, well then resources aren't going to be able to pay for the goods and services that go into making the products. On the macro side, not only are we looking at this consumption of goods that's going on, but you're also looking at these different components within. Um, what we'll learn in the GDP screencast is that one way to calculate GDP is to look at consumption and investment and government spending and net exports. And these are the different components here. Consumption is on the outside. And then you have the government spending, which is uh, the government is able to get money through taxes. And so there's an inflow of money going into the government. And then they use that money to spend on different services and goods. And so that's the outflow of money. In addition to the government, you also have financial institutions, which are banks. And banks are about investments where businesses or people um, are utilizing loans to be able to purchase big investments to help their businesses grow or even investments within um, the, your own house. And so the inflow of money into the institution are the savings and then the outflow is the investment spending that happens. Um, investment spending builds up that capital stock which is really important for economic growth, that increase in real GDP. Another part that goes along with it is the international sector or the net exports. And the inflow of money comes from the imports because of the um, you know, money that is coming in that we're using for that. And then the outflow would be for the exporting of the goods and services that we give to other countries. And again, in micro, it would just be the outside where you're looking at the consumption component of it. But when we're talking about the macro, we're looking at the consumption and the investment spending and the government spending and the net exports that go with it. Another thing to recognize, too, is that another connection with GDP that we talked about previously is with the business cycle because the business cycle is measuring uh, the real GDP and its relationship with these economic indicators of unemployment and inflation. In macroeconomics, it's really important to be able to see the various connections that these different topics have uh, with, uh, with the different content, it's because questions can um, be asked that relate to multiple topics at one time.